say thanks for the things that you've done for me. Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voice is Good morning, saints. Bless you this morning. Amen, amen. It's good to be in the, on this broadcast one more time. I'm Bishop Clarence R. Askers, a pastor of the Philadelphia Christian Church Ministries. Amen. We just thank God for another day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it this morning. We're going to uh, just have a fine time in the Lord this morning. I'm excited, amen, to... Uh, to be on this line one more Sunday, amen, to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, amen. We've had a fine uh, Sunday school this morning. Dr. Robert Franks did a wonderful job, and all the participation that went on on that line in Second Kings, amen, dealing with that book, amen, they, they did a wonderful job. So we're just excited about keeping that flow going this morning, keeping that spirit moving this morning in our service, amen. So we're going to start opening up our service now. Uh, we're going to ask our scripture to be read this morning from Sister Elaine Askins and followed by our invocational uh, prayer. That's going to be done by Reverend Dr. Thomas Brown this morning. He's going to bless us with the invocational prayer. Amen. And they're going to come down in that order. Praise the Lord. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is the word of God, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, just giving you the praise this morning and said thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that you have been so good, you have been so kind, and you have been so merciful. We just come this morning asking, O oh God, that you continue to bless Philadelphia in a mighty way. Bless all those that's under the sound of my voice this morning. Father, we just ask you just to Wrap your arms around her this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, thank God for our scripture reading, just to ask us in that invocational prayer by Reverend Brown. Thank you all so much. Amen. We're just moving right along in the service uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to have our opening hymn. Uh, normally, when we're in our church, we do a congregational type hymn. So we're going to have an opening hymn done this morning by none other than Deaconess Carol Jumbo. She's going to come and do our opening hymn, and we're going to come right back with prayer. Amen. Our intercessory prayer, and our intercessory prayer will be given this morning none other by Deaconess Yvonne Snowden. She's going to uh, come and pray for all of us after the opening hymn. Amen. They're going to come in that order. Amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a load of light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a load of talk with Jesus made me whole. So let's have a load of talk with Jesus. Tell them all about our trouble. Hear our fainted cry. And turn by and by. Feel no prayer we're turning. No, the fire's burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. 
I may have doubts and fears, my heart be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. So let's have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Hear our fainted cry. Mm-hmm. Answer by and by. Mm-hmm. Feel a little prayer will turn in. Know the fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Just have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our fainted cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in, know the fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. Amen. Just before we do the intercessory prayer, because uh, Deacon is... Uh, Yvonne Snowden comes. I want all of you, as she prays, uh, say a special prayer for the uh, Matthew family, Jean, uh, Pastor Gene Matthews, uh, pastor of the Salvation Restoration Missionary Baptist Church, laid her sister to rest yesterday, um, and wonderful funeral, funeral went well. Uh, but uh, like anything else, time has to take its course uh, when you deal sometimes with death. And so just keep them in prayer and pray their strength in the Lord uh, this morning um, as you pray and pray along with uh, 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 Deacon Snowden. And uh, I want to thank um, I want to thank some people. I want to get that out of the way because many times you want to do things and you just don't you forget about it. But I want to thank uh, Reverend Dr. Franks for the media. Um, uh, overseeing the media ministry went very well, helping that service out along with uh, Minister Donna Knight um, and uh, Deacon Charles Pratt, along with Sister uh, Deaconess Massey. They did a wonderful job um, uh, helping and representing the church. And so I just want to throw that out before we go too far uh, into service. Amen. So at this time, I want to call now on uh, Deacon is Yvonne Snow to get our intercessory prayer this morning. Oh, heavenly, oh, wise, eternal Father, we come this morning just to say thank you, Lord God. Thank, thank you, Lord you. God, for allowing us to see a brand new day. Oh, Father God, we just thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace, oh, Father God. We just thank you, oh, Father God, how you just take care of us day in and day out, oh, Father God, we just say thank you, Lord, for your love. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, who made it possible, Lord God, that we can come this day openly to your throne of grace this morning, Lord, and we just say thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the very Holy Spirit, oh, Father God, that flows from breast to breast and heart to heart this day, oh, Father God. We say thank you for your spirit, Lord. Oh, Father God, I pray that you look down upon my heart this morning, Lord God. Please forgive me for any sin that I have committed in word, thought, or deed, oh, Father God. Oh, Father God, I pray that you will hear our many prayers, oh, Father God, spoken and unspoken prayers this morning, Lord. Oh, Father God, we lift up to you, Lord God, the bereaved family everywhere, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we pray that you will just send comfort upon their hearts, oh, Father God. Let them know that they are never alone, Lord God, that you have your blanket of love wrapped around them, oh, Father God. Oh, Father God, I just pray that you continue to be with the Matthews family, Lord God. Continue to help them, oh, Father God. Oh, Father God, their sister is in a better place, oh, Father God. And one day, Lord God, they will see her again, Lord God. Oh, Father God, I just pray that you will just be with the sick everywhere, Lord God. You know those who are sick in body, soul, and spirit, oh, Father God. You know those who are homesick, Lord God. You know those who are in the hospitals, Lord God. You know those who are on their 
nursing home bed of afflictions, oh, Father God, everywhere, Lord God. You know those homeless people who are out there sick, Lord God, have mercy upon them, Lord God. Send them help, Lord God, that they too will get the help that they might get well too. Oh, Father God, we just pray, oh, Father God, for every boy, every girl this morning, Lord God, that you watch over the little children, oh, Father God, that you will protect them from seeing and unseen dangers, oh, Father God. We pray for those little babies in the womb this morning, Lord God, that they will see life one day, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we just pray, oh, Father God, that you would just go within the homes, Lord God, and that you would help those relationships between mother and daughter, mother and son, husband with wife, Lord God. Oh, Father God, that you would just be that glue to keep that family together, Lord God. Help them to know, oh, Father God, that you love families, Lord God. And you have families, oh, Father God, here to help one another, Lord God, that we might be a better example to our children, Lord God, that they too would know how to raise their children and how to fear the ammunition of the true and living God, oh, Father God. Help us to be those good examples before them, Lord God, because they are our generations to come, oh, Father. Oh, Father God, we just pray, Lord God, that you look down upon this nation, Lord God, that you will just work your will within that White House, Lord God, from the president, vice president, and every in office, Lord God. Oh, Father God, for the mayor, oh, Father God, and the governor, and all of those who are in leadership over us, Lord God, give them the wisdom, knowledge, and godly understanding to do that which is right towards all men, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we just pray right now for that sinner man, woman, boy, or girl who don't know Jesus and the pardon of their sins, that something might be said this day, Lord God, that you might bring your word upon their hearts through the Holy Spirit, oh, Father God, that they will say, what must I do to be saved, oh, Father God? So, Lord God, we just come lifting up Philadelphia to you this morning, Lord God, and we pray that you would... Go from breast to breast and heart to heart, Lord God, that you will be with your servant that will bring forth the word today, Lord God, that you will remove him, Lord God, and that you will speak through him, O Father God, like you told Jeremiah, I will speak from your mouth. O Father God, speak through his mouth to us today. Help your word to fall on good ground, Father God, that we will have that desire to want to worship you, to serve you, to do that which is right. Oh, Father God, you give us time after time to get it right, Lord God. Help us, oh, Father God, to show the love aboard to every woman, boy, and girl, Lord God, that all will come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. So, Lord God, we just thank you for this and all things, oh, Father God. We praise your holy name. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Oh, amen, amen. Thank amen. you so much for that fervent prayer, amen. I know it. Listen, if you weren't feeling good, amen, and, and you're feeling a little low be, before that prayer, you should be all uh, pepped up right now. Because that was a fervent prayer, amen. It reached down in our souls, amen, and moved our spirit, amen. I tell you, thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Carl Jones, for that song, amen. It just penetrated our heart. Uh, for that prayer coming through. Amen. So we're just excited about getting closer and closer uh, in our, to our word this morning. Our, our um, man of God, amen, is going to bring the word and the person of uh, Reverend Dr. Melvin Garrison. He's going to preach this morning. Amen. And bring us the gospel message uh, uh, to us this morning. But before he does that, before he does that, we always have a uh, song, amen, of preparation. Amen. We always have a song of preparation. So we're going to ask uh, Ms. Carol Jones to come on back. She's going to do the song of preparation for her beloved brother and the, and the preacher. Amen. <laughs> After which, uh, Reverend Dr. Melvin Garrison is going to come in his own way, either with his own scripture reading or whether he designated that scripture reading to somebody else, I don't know. But he's going to come right back following that song and give us our morning message. Amen. Sister uh, Deaconess Carol Jones, come on. 
I seen the light and flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt since breakers dashing, which tried to conquer my soul. I've heard the voice of my Savior. He bid me still fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. Oh, no, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. He died on Calvary's mountain, for me they pierced his side. For me he opened that fountain, the crimson cleansing time for me he's waiting in glory upon his heavenly throne he promised never to leave me never to leave me alone when in affliction valley, I tread the road of care. My Savior helped me carry the cross too heavy to bear. Though all around me is darkness, and earthly joys are flown. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. Oh, no, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. Oh, no, never alone. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Amen. Amen. I'd like to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and thank you, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity to come before you people, to bless them with the word. Now, the word of God reads, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders attain a good report. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he attained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it being yet dead, speaking. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because, he, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith is it impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. I have read Hebrews 11, 1 to 6. And I want to speak to you on the topic of matter, grounded in faith. Grounded in faith. Now, Amen. I took... I looked up um, in the Holman Bible Dictionary and what it had to say about faith, and this is what it said. It said um, faith throughout scriptures is the trust for human response to God's self-revelation 
according to his words and his actions. God initiates the relationship between himself and human beings. He expects people to trust him. Failure to trust him was, in essence, the first sin. Um, and that's according to Genesis 3.17. You know that he had told Adam and Eve not to, they could eat everything but the tree in the garden that he instructed them not to eat. And they um, did not do as he had told them. As a matter of fact, it said that, that um, the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, or so shalt thou eat of the days of thy life. In other words, they didn't trust him enough to obey him and when he told them not to eat for the tree, it was good and evil, or good and um, so they disobeyed him. So that was considered um, failure to trust him was the first uh, sin. And, and we, many of us don't think of uh, 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 um, lack of trust as being a sin or worrying as a sin because we think of everything else as a sin. And many times we worry because we think we have to worry. We think we must worry. But God says that. When we worry or when we don't trust them, it's a sin. And we don't, most people don't look at it, like I say, as a, as a sin. So, so it goes on to say that since the fall of humanity, God nurtures and inspires trust in him through what he says and does for the benefit of the people who need him. He provides evidence of this trustworthiness by acting and speaking in the internal world to make himself known to people who need him. The most significant word for faith is a word called amen. It's spelled A-M-A-N, amen. Amen. A root word that means reliability, stability, and firmness. As the Old Testament period progressed, God gave more information about how he planned to empower more people with genuine faith or fear of the Lord. Through Jeremiah, for example, God predicted that he would make an everlasting covenant with which he would enable people to fear him. That's according to Jeremiah 33 and 40. Um, and then God described the covenant which he would write his laws on the heart of his people to allow them to know him personally. Jeremiah 31, 33, 34. Now, what's interesting about this text is the fact that um, he's, when we say we have faith or trust in God, we, we shouldn't be a people that has to see it first before we believe it. Many times he... We pray to him and ask him for things, and, 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 and it may not be when we want it, how we want it, or the way we want it. But if we say we're going to trust him, whatever way he comes forth, or whatever way he chooses to do things, we ought to trust him and have faith in him and believe that he's going to do the best or give us his best. This is all. But sometimes we have a tendency of um, relying on other things and other people, and we'll trust other things and other people before we trust them. Well, he's six, six books would tell you that not once had he failed to do what he said he was going to do, whether it was blessing, judgment, or cursing. He always did what he promised to do. But he promised to never leave us or forsake us. I think of the, when I think about faith, I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how they stood before Nebuchadnezzar and would denounce their God, would not honor any of the God but the living God. And here they were to go on before a god that was going, a, a king that was going to throw them into the furnace, seven times higher yeah. than the furnace has ever built. But yet, my, my. they would not allow their faith to be shaken. They stood their ground because they trusted the living God. They told them, even if he don't deliver us from yeah. this fire, we will not forsake our God. So that, that, that's strong faith. To me, that's strong faith. And then I think about Daniel, how... Um, yeah. Daniel prayed, and it, 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 it was trying to stop him from praying to end up or worshiping to their gods. And Daniel refused to, to, to go away from his faith. So much so that, that, that they was able to convince the king to uh, uh, pray to Edith, that anybody pray to any god other than the king, that they would face this punishment. So we, we all know the story how he stuck to his guns, and, and, and then the king had no choice because he had made this um, promise to these other people. That he had to put him in his mind then, and he said the king couldn't eat or sleep, mm. couldn't do anything. He mm. didn't want any entertainment because he, he didn't want yeah. to do that to Daniel. He knew Daniel was a good man. And Daniel showed his faith because he went to that uh, alliance then. He didn't have, so the Bible never showed any way where he had any fear. He took a chance, and, and because of his faith, the Bible said that God closed the mouths of the lions, and not a lot of harm was coming. And then when the king came the next morning, 
he found that he wasn't harmed. And he, and he believed that it was his God that saved him. So what I'm saying is faith, real faith, it takes a lot of um, faith. And you have to be strong in your faith to, to withstand the things that come against you. And then I'm going to have one more example, then I'm going to move on to the text. I think about David. They wanted to put all this armor on David, but David went out there with just a swing shot and rock, five, five stones. And, and, and here was a man nine feet tall, much bigger and uh, much more experienced than he was in fighting. But because of his faith, he, he, he knew that his victory will come through the living God. That's what we got to be. As believers, we got to believe that no matter what we face, as long as we got faith in God, he's going to do what he said he's going to do, and he's going to stick to his word. Now, sometimes we may not like the way he do things, but one thing, he, when he does what he do, he's faithful. And we got to be faithful to him. Sometimes when we go to uh, 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 pray for someone who, who's very ill, and we pray that they heal him, he chooses not to heal him, but he chooses to take him on. It's because he has a better place for them to go. He said, I come that you, uh, that you may have life. In other words, where he's taking them to, he's taking them from this world that's corrupt, filled with a whole lot of diseases and things, to a world that's none of that exists. So our faith Amen. means that whatever Amen. choice God takes, we have to trust him, minister. If he takes that loved one, even though we pray for that loved one, it's because he had a better plan for that one. And our faith will tell us that nothing's going to change me because I trust God's choice. That's what faith is all about. It's not what we can put our hand on or see. It's what we trust him before it happens. We live in a society of people who, unless I see it, unless I can touch it, I'm not going to believe it. I, I hear you giving yes. me all the scriptures. I hear you saying all this stuff. But if I don't see it, I don't believe it. And as we as overcome, we don't think like that. We don't have a mindset like that. Whatever God said he's going to do, whatever he's going to do, I'm going to trust him. That's what faith is all about. Faith is not when we see it happen, then we believe. Faith is believing it's going to happen before we believe. You know, Pastor, you say a lot of times, uh, uh, you, call it, you believe it, you, you say it as though it is. In other words, I'm not going to worry about how God's going to do it. I just know whatever he does, he's going to do it the right way. I don't have to question how he's going to do it. Yes. My faith tells me, even though I'm going through something, uh, he's going to bring me through. If we were to go back and look back on some of the times of things that we brought through and how he brought us through and realize that it was how he brought us through, then our faith should never waver. It's to stay strong because we've been through stuff before and he's brought us through stuff before. He's never failed us. He's always kept his promise. He's always kept his word. And that's what faith is all about. You know, during this pandemic, we're going through all kinds of changes, and, and, and people are really wavering in their faith. I mean, and I'm not knocking people for, you know, even though we get, they got this vaccine, they got this uh, uh, social distancing mask, none of this can have any real protection if God takes his hand off of us. So we shouldn't put all our hopes and all our faith mm. in all these things that they're coming up with these vaccines and these, these, these masks, because of, without his faith in him, none of this is going to matter. Our faith in should be to him first and everything else second. Mm. And when we forget him, when we give all the credit to man because of this vaccine and we take our mind off of him, we're telling him we're trusting this more than we trust him. I trust him because he don't have to do the research. He don't have to do uh, uh, studies. We go to the one who already knows what to do without consulting or need to consult anyone. That's what faith is all about. That's right. That's right. Yes. He don't have to consult anybody. He don't need. He don't need no labs. He don't need no experiments because he 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 knows his wisdom goes beyond whatever man tells us. So don't get caught up in the media and this foolishness. Put your faith in God first, and then trust Him. Mm. Yes, sir. That's what faith is all about. If you read this chapter of Hebrews, it'll tell you through all the stuff that many of those did because they trusted God. They didn't trust anybody else. They didn't put their faith in nobody else. They trusted God. They believed what he said he was going to do. When you look at this text, you'll find that after presenting the first ten chapters to a person of Judaism and God's economy, this book charges the Hebrew believers who are in danger of shrinking back to the where they believe, 
but it encourages them to walk, to live, to walk, and to go on by faith. But here in chapter 11, it goes on to define faith according to the history of faith, both the eternal inheritance, which is in Hebrews 9.15, and the great reward, which is in Hebrews 10.35. Promised by God, all things hoped for are things are not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the assurance, the confidence, the confirmation, the reality, the essence, the supporting grounds of things hoped for. It convinces us things not seen. The unbelievers being without Christ have no hope. That's according to Ephesians 2.12, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. But we as believers in Christ are a people of hope. The calling we see from God brings us hope. That's according to Ephesians 1.18, Ephesians 4.4. 4. We have been regenerated into a living hope, 1 Peter 1 and, 1 and 3. But as we move into verse 2 to 3 in this text, we will find the verses to present us two illustrations of the use of faith. First, faith enabled the heroes of the Old Testament to receive a good standing with God. God gave his approval to the faith of these saints. Second, believing God created the world involves a leap of faith. It includes ages that God had planned, beginning with the act of creation, extending to the consummation of all things in Christ. Abel's offering was more acceptable than Cain. Abel showed faith. His offering was an unrestrained response to God with lavish worship that pleased God. Five, Genesis 5.24 tells us that Enoch, most of us heard of Enoch, walked with God, but then he was no more. In other words, God just came and took him away. And because God took him away, two things stand out here. Enoch's release from death was due to his faith. Don't, don't miss this. His release from death was due to his faith. He had to have great faith in order for God to want to do something like that. So therefore, his translation to heaven, he lived a life that was pleasing to God. Faith in a God that he could not see controlled his entire life. The bottom line is this. Real fellowship with God cannot exist without faith. Did you hear me? Amen. Real That's right. fellowship Amen. with God cannot exist without faith. Faith. Yes. Two things we should realize is this. We must believe that he exists. Mm. Anyone wanting to commune with God must have a deep conviction that God is real. God's servants must believe that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Faith is not selfish, yet faith has confidence in a God of love and goodness. It would be foolish for us to look for a God that did not exist, but as believers, we know that that is not true. In other words, when we're going through our trials and tribulations, um, and like I said earlier, I never looked at this really as a sin. I didn't think of it as a sin when I wore and I and I, I can be a worry walk at times, and, and, and even when I go to the doctor, my anxiety is always with And And I, when I looked at this text yesterday, I felt real foolish, and I felt... Like I was doing him an injustice by me going in like that. In other words, when we go through some crisis and when we're going through some stuff, we ought to know that 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 the stuff that we know he done brought us through. He's been he, he done brought us through stuff before, but yet we don't trust him enough to give him every area of our life. Faith. When we got faith and and, and and real solid faith, we have to realize that um. It says, the word says in verse 6, it said, but without faith, faith, it's impossible to please him. That he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is the reward of them that doesn't do In other words, you can't go to him half-heartedly. You can't hold back what you want to bring to him. You can't decide what part you want to bring to him. You, when you go to him in prayer and you go to him to seek him, you're saying to him, I'm going to trust, Father, what you're going to do. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm not going to decide how you ought to do it. Whatever way you do it, I'm going to trust you. That's what mm. faith is all about. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. If we got to be shown everything, you, you, you remember when, when, when Jesus came back, walked to the room with the disciples after his, after his crucifixion, everybody believed but Thomas. You remember Donald, that story about Thomas? Yes. He said he believed because you have seen. But, but what he's telling us in so many words, greater faith 
without sin. Do you believe without sin? We believe in God. We have never seen God face to face, but we believe in him. Amen? Amen. So when when I look at this text, it it, it I, I, it blew me away that I, I completely pushed that sin aside when I thought about my lack of faith in certain areas. Worrying. And, uh, and we all worry. Sometimes we worry, we think too much, sometimes we feed into what we think is going to happen. Sometimes most of us, we worry so much that we don't think anything good can happen for us. Our life is always be stuck and always begin. But when you put your faith in God, when you really begin to learn how to trust Him, nothing's in power. We shouldn't be worrying about anything. Not this pandemic, not not how we're going to eat, how we're going to drink. He said, I, I will never forsake you. And then David says in Psalm 37, I've never seen righteous forsaken or their seed begin. In other words, David's saying, he's always come through for me. And I'm telling you, as believe, we're not just going to be believe, we're overcomers. In other words, an overcomer is somebody that, okay, how many times you get knocked down, you get back up, and you keep going, you keep fighting, you keep praying. And you say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to work this out, but my faith tells me that I'm going to trust you for whatever you do. I'm going to trust you. Lord have mercy. So we got, we, we got to show a better example as believers to, to the world. You know, the world see us falling apart, see us complaining, see us uh, uh, giving in. Then that's, that's not an invitation to, to, to invite them to the faith. They're going to say, well, that's what they're all they're going through. I don't need to do that. I'm already going through that. But when they can see you endure persevere, push him forward in spite of all that come against you, somebody's going to want to know what kind of God is he serving. That's what faith would do for you. But you can't just talk it. you got to live it. you got to believe it. And, 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 yeah. and James tell you, and, and James tell you, uh, like a wave, doubting and, and going to and from, he said you shouldn't expect anything when you think like that. In other words, if you're going to wave in your faith, you're going to doubt, then you shouldn't expect anything from James. Tell you it's right in the word. It's not my friend. It's right there in the word. That's right. That's right. All you got to just read. So what I'm saying to you today: stop letting everything else yeah. keep you from trusting God. God's never shown us that he's, he he has to think about anything. He he already knows what we stand. Sometimes that's why he don't allow us to see too much. Because if he told us everything that was going on, then we he'd be expecting it. Or we be in deep in fear. So, in other words, we just got to trust him at his word. That's what faith is all about. That's what this chapter is talking about. It talks about how Abraham left his home not knowing where he was going. It, it talks about how Joseph, how Jacob leaned on his on his dying, bless, uh, 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 Joseph's two sons. It talks about all these people who tr- truly believe well. And, and, and everybody knows what Joseph went through. He went through all that kind of stuff. Prison, right. um, being cast away, cast away from his family, being in prison for something he didn't do, or uh, being accused of something he didn't do, but yet Tell he didn't story. lose his faith. And That's what right. God did, He rewarded him for his faith. He, he, he moved him so high, he went past from being a slave to second in command of Egypt, and he even provided for his family that was facing famine in, in Israel. He even put him in a position where he could feed his family. So don't tell me what faith can't do for you. When you show faith to God and you, sh- and you trust Him, sometimes we have stuff He, he blesses with more than we even ask for, but we got to learn how to trust Him and believe that when He says, I'm going to do it, He's going to do it. Six, six books prove He's never lied. Six, six books prove it shows He's never lied about anything He says He's going to do. So my, my reward today is to encourage you as believers and as my brothers and sisters in Christ. Dig deep into your heart and, and allow him to show you the kind of faith that, that will get you. Let me show you some scriptures with you. Um, first, I'm going to start with Luke 17, 5 to 6. It said, The apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say to the sycamore tree, Be plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. What Jesus was saying, if you have faith no bigger than a mustard seed, in other words, he wasn't judging the size of your faith, but he was saying a little faith was better than no faith at all. Amen? So you have a little faith, that's better than having no faith at all. And then again, he tells us in Matthew 17, 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, 
For verily I say unto you, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove the hence and go yonder the place, and it shall remove. And nothing, listen to this, and nothing shall be impossible mm. unto you. In other words, what he's telling you, I don't care how big the problem is or what you're going through, if you've got the faith of the size of mustard and you say move, whatever's keeping you down, whatever's coming against you, if you have faith, you can say that that, that mountain, whatever mountain of trouble is in front of you, move. And they say they shall obey to you. And he, and he said again, like I said, nothing is possible. Amen? The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans ten seventeen, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, which gives us knowledge. Now faith comes by taking in God's word. In other words, when we start to go through stuff, when you go, I, I, I many times I look in the Bible and was going through some stuff, and I come across a word, and they gave me my answer right then and there. And this is what you need to do. And, and we can't know God unless we study his word. We can't just glance at his word or just read it and close the book. You've got to meditate on that word and let that word speak back to you. Let that word tell you what you need to do. You know, many things our answer is right there in the word. But you've got to take time in that word. Allow God to speak to you. Sometimes we've got to just be quiet and let him speak to us. We can't do all the talking. It's a two-way conversation that needs to be taking place. And look what Paul said again, and, and, um, and here's something you really need to think about. In Romans fourteen twenty three, he said, He that doubted is damned if he eat, because he that eat it not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith. Well, Paul is telling us if someone eats meat anyway, in other words, meat, whatever, we, in, a, in, in a clear language, that, that person is condemned. He is not eating from faith. Put it another way, he is eating against his own faith. He doesn't mean that person is condemned in the sense that he would no longer be a Christian. He is condemned in the sense that he is guilty of sin, though still, but he, though he still he is in Christ. In other words, um, when we doubt God, it's a sin. That's serious. So rather than doubt him, just say, Lord, I don't understand, and ask him to help you to understand. Ask him to speak to your heart and to your spirit. See, faith, like I said, is it, it, a lot more than than. It's just um, hoping. Well, some of us don't have any hope at all because we're so used to things going against us. But when we got faith in God, God can move mountains. All we got to do is have that faith in Him, and, and and that's why it took some things like all the things I go through. My wife sometimes with the illness that she had. It, 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 it's only faith that got us through the stuff that we've been through. She had Legionnaire's disease years ago. She's been dead. They wanted to put a track in her during that time. But through prayer, I went down there, and the Lord gave me my mind said, don't let him do it. I'm going to heal him. And she didn't need a track. She'd be running a track today had I not listened or went down there in prayer and sought God's wisdom and understanding. They wanted to pull the track and something she would have been still living with now, but because he pointed me in another direction, that the faith told me not to do it, and we didn't need it done. She don't need a track. So I'm saying somebody's going through something today, and someone don't know how they're going to make it. But I'm telling you, when you start to learn to have faith in God, God is going to move mountains. He's going to provide you with everything that you need, sometimes more than you need. So my word today is, is, is to don't depend on everything the media and the world tells you. Go to God first. He doesn't have to search or do research. He create, he, he's too wise for all that. He knows exactly what you need. But you gotta have, you gotta believe in him. And if you don't believe him, then you're going to him in vain because he's, he's not going to hear you as long as you're showing disbelief or you don't trust him. I, I can't imagine not trusting a God who created. All you gotta do is look around this creation of the earth, and he spoke it. He didn't have to put his hand on. He spoke it into existence. He spoke man yeah. into existence. Yeah. He spoke you into existence. He, he everything he does. Power. He, we, why, why won't we go to him? He got all power in his hands. Everything we need, he has. But you got to have that faith. You got to trust him. I'm done. I'm done. Amen. 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 Well, if you're unmuted, and uh, you can certainly say amen to that sermon. What a wonderful sermon. 
Uh, we thank God for Reverend Dr. Melvin Garrison. He brought a powerful word, faith. Amen. Little faith, little power, much faith, much power. Amen. That's always comes into my mind when I think about faith. Amen. Sometimes God has used us to, to see where we are in our faith. And Reverend Garrison, you just made it real clear to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my brother. Amen. With a, with a message like that, amen. We, we're we going to ask Reverend uh, Garrison to come back and give an invitation. Maybe it might be somebody on this line. We don't know who's on the line. Sister Aspen have a general idea, but there might be somebody on the line that uh, listened to this uh, broadcast, amen, on their airwaves and decided they want to uh, 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 either give their life to Christ or join the Philadelphia Christian Church Ministry. So at this time, Reverend Garrison, come on back. And so I said, lifeline, my brother. Hey Amen. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, there's no better relationship than to have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you're talking to ex drug addict, alcoholic who didn't, who was throwing his life away and didn't believe life was any more worth living. Who didn't believe anything good could happen, but through prayer of the righteous and through faith in God, he helped me overcome my addictions. Help me overcome my alcoholism. Help me to know that life can be lived without those addictions. And that he came to give me life abundantly. I come to ask someone today who, if you if don't know Christ in a partner, saying, or if you don't have a relationship with him, there's no better time than now to surrender your life to him, to give him your life and trust him because he's going to lead you through. He's going to do what's right. And, and, and there's no better lifeline than you coming to Christ. He said, I come to you have life and have it more abundantly. So is there one on the line who don't, or maybe you might have been backslidden. You may have walked away for a while and want to come back. Philadelphia and Pastor Ass and all of us would love to have you join us because we teach the word, we believe in the word, and we go by the word. And, and if there's one on the line, would you like to come forward? Is there one? Well, Pastor, Amen. I guess that's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. Well, again, we thank God for the word of God, amen, that's been preached and brought to us this morning. Amen. We thank God for all the songs that have been sung and the scriptures that have been read and the, uh, the prayers that have been prayed. Oh, it's just been a good day. Amen. It's good to know that you're still in the service. Amen. Whether we're in the sanctuary, out of sanctuary. God's word is still good. Amen. It's good. Amen. Everywhere you, everywhere you go, it's good. Amen. We're just looking there now. Just about two weeks from now. Amen. We're looking to be back in our our own sanctuary. Amen. We'll have the uh, starting time. That'll be our first communion service on that fourth uh, of April. Uh, in the meantime, we'll do the. Uh, um, we're going to be looking forward. we got some things coming up, amen, and surprises, amen. Not so much a surprise, but we're going to have the seven last sands on the on this phone line, amen. We, 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 uh, we've turned it over to the women's ministry this year that they're going to bring us the seven last sands, amen. So we thank God for them, and we're, gonna, we're looking for, amen, Palm Sunday, amen, which is next, uh, next Sunday, amen, is our Palm Sunday. So we're just having... We're just getting excited, amen, on what we're going to be doing leading up, going back to into our sanctuary, amen. And, uh, again, I thank everybody for staying steadfast, amen, and being unmovable, amen. You, you know, many times you can say, well, I'm on the, I'm on these, we're on the phone line, nobody can see me, amen, nobody knows what I'm doing, but you come on every Sunday morning with us, amen, to praise and worship the Lord. And God will reward you for your faithfulness. Don't you ever think he will? He will reward you for your faithfulness. Amen. So if my brother's on the line, I'm about ready to close out. If my brother, Minister Knight, is on the line, somebody just tell him how to unmute himself if he's on the line. I didn't hear his voice today. I want him to come on and do a closing prayer, and then we're going to come back with uh, – uh, with the with our uh, normal uh, getting off the line, God be with you. So it's Reverend Knight on the line. Amen. Bishop, I don't know how you didn't hear me, man. Reverend Garrison had me hollering and screaming on that face. <laughs> oh God, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> yeah. Hey Doc, as soon as he said, 
soon as he said Hebrews chapter 11, I already knew that it was now faithful, which is the something the things hoped for and the evidence of things not right, seen. So I was already shouting right there. All Thank you, Reverend right. Garrison, for that word, man, about faith. Amen. Reverend Eternal God, we thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you. We thank you, God, this morning. We thank you, God, for you have heard the prayer of the righteous. We thank you, God, for looking over us, oh, Father God, during this time of pain, this pandemic, and all of these situations that are going on that's creating problems and havoc in the homes and in the church. Oh, God, we know that you are God of everything, and we understand, oh, Father God, by the preached word, oh, Father God, that we can do nothing unless we got faith. We know that it's impossible to please you unless we got faith, but the faith that we have has got to be now faith, not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith. You said now faith, and thank you for the faith that we have as a mustard seed. Oh, Lord, we thank you now for Philadelphia Christian Church ministry under the pastorship and the doctorship, the, our overseer, our bishop, our pastor, oh, Father God, Dr. Reverend Clarence Ray Atkins, oh, Father God. We thank you for his diligence, oh, Father God. We thank you, oh, Father God, for we never can thank the man of God. Uh, um, enough for um, he is in charge, your Father God, and if anything happened, whether good or bad, all eyes are going to be on him. Now, Tupac ain't the only one that had all eyes on him. All eyes will be on the pastor. So we thank our pastor for keeping the church going, for keeping uh, uh, um, um, the saints uh, in communication with one another, for keeping the Bible study, the Sunday schools, and we're, we're thanking uh, Dr. Reverend Frank, so Father God, for intervening and making sure that we continue to stay in touch with one another, where faith comes by hearing, uh, uh, so we ain't really got to see one another. Y'all ain't talking back to me. So we thank God right now for everything that you've done, for the many things that we want to say. You already know about it. Oh, Father God, now to him that's able to keep us from falling, we thank you. We love you. God said it. Jesus did it. The Holy Spirit bear witness to it. Let PCCM say amen, amen, and amen. 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 I'll be with you. Come on, first lady. God, be with you until we meet again. God, be with you. God, be with you. God. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer. Thank you for the, uh, the song. Amen. Don't forget now to continue, Amen. To, support, to continue to support this ministry. Amen. I will be out and about. I'm leaving on my way down to the church. Amen. Let's see if there's uh, any donations there. But uh, we want you to take advantage of the uh um, our uh, cash app take advantage uh, of the um, of the other vehicles that we have in giving uh, you can call Reverend Frank say amen he will help you with that uh, uh, and Sister Ashton they'll help you uh, make sure that your money is deposited into one, one or the other vehicle that we have to help support our ministry amen and so we are we, 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 if you if you need me to even stop by, you're not able to get out. Just just text me, Amen. If I'm going to be out and about anyway. So thank you so much. Be blessed and be highly favored. Have a great day mm-hmm. in the Lord. You too, Bishop. Amen. 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 Bless your heart.